so I went to MENA last week and I think the first thing that strikes me when I go is it's very difficult to reach there because no vehicle from Colombo can go straight to MENA. It's also the case with Baunia. You will be stopped at Madhavachya and then you have to arrange your own transport from there onwards whether it's a public or whether it's private transport. And coming back is the same story. There is no vehicle from Vaunia or Mana that is allowed to come through to Colombo. This causes immense hardships to particularly old people, mothers and families who bring infant children and a variety of other ordinary civilians. It also causes particular difficulties for humanitarian agencies who are transporting supplies to be distributed to internally displaced people. I hear that there is some concessions made to medical personnel and I think vehicles like ambulances are allowed to go through, but not for ordinary civilians. Uh, the second thing is that there's a lot of fear and insecurity in the Mena town where I was for a few days. Uh, there's still disappearances happening. There are beatings that were reported to me even on the days that I was there by the security forces. Uh, so there's a lot of fear. And then there's also uh, the question of displaced people. Now, people who were displaced from Aripu Silavatura side uh, more than six months ago, actually, beginning of September last year, were promised initially they would be sent back in three, four days. Uh, later on, they were said, told that they can go back in January this year. But up to now, about seven months later, they are still displaced. Many of them are still in refugee camps, and some of them are with their own families or with uh, relatives. So they are still in a state of displacement despite the government's claims that the area is liberated and that it was a humanitarian operation. But the reality is that it's actually a humanitarian disaster and a humanitarian tragedy for those people, uh, not liberation. Uh, there's also a group of people that are displaced from the one. Now these are people who actually are fleeing from the LTTE. Uh, from the people that we uh, managed to talk to, uh, they find the situation in the one area controlled by the LTTE very oppressive. In particular, they are very much in fear of recruitment of uh, children. Uh, but children in the sense people who are 18 years seems to be more the target of the LTT these days. So the category of young people who are around 17 years are particularly vulnerable. So we, I met several families who said that uh, as soon as their children are 17 they try to flee. And they try to flee by boat because there are severe restrictions imposed on the LTT on freedom of movement, particularly for them to come into government controlled areas. There were two points previously, the Madhu Road and Ulanpulam, which were available, but those roads are closed now. And the only option to come is through Amantai, but they cannot come through without the permission of the LTTE. Uh, so they are facing a lot of difficulties and they try to flee by boat. And that's a very dangerous journey because there are often battles between the Sea Tigers and the Navy. And these innocent people who are fleeing from the LTT get caught in it. Uh, I met a young girl who was about nine years old, who was still injured, who couldn't write properly because of the injuries, who uh, was a victim, who was injured when she was fleeing with her family. She had lost her brother and sister in that incident, but her father and mother and another sister had escaped. And these people are being actually now being kept in a kind of open prison. Uh, in the MENA area, they are not allowed to move around for even several months. So that's a big question. They flee from the operation of the LTT and now they get restricted from the government forces. They are not allowed to move around. Uh, and then I think a very important thing while we were in MENA that caught the attention of many people was the question of Madhu Church. Because on the previous Monday, I think it was 31st of March, uh, when I was there, shells had fallen into Madhu Church. I heard the administrator of the Madhu Church speaking by phone uh, to the bishop's house where I happened to be at that particular time. Uh, so the priest and the few people there had to hide in bunkers. It wasn't very clear whether the shells were coming from the LTT or from the security forces, but from what I could gather, uh, it seems to be from the LTT side. Uh, the shells that had fallen into the Madhu Shrine area. There wasn't particular damage to the shrine itself, which is considered very sacred by Catholics all over the country, uh, but the area that the, the priest and the religious stay were damaged. Uh, so they were in hiding in the bunkers in the premises itself. A few days later, uh, they had to flee and they had to flee with the statue. It couldn't be brought into government controlled areas because the whole day they were in the bunker and by the time they came out around four o'clock outside of the bunker, it was too late because the checkpoint closes by around 4.30 or 5. 
and anyway the the, the security forces have been uh, implicated in attacking several churches like the Pesale even in LIPD and many other churches uh, the disappearance of Catholic priest Father Jim Brown and even in the incident of Thaladi church the church uh, has become very suspicious about the military officials so I don't think that they are in a position to trust that the security forces can protect the the very much sacred the Our Lady of uh, Madhu statue so because of that I would think that they had taken it deep inside the Vanmi and to keep it secure. So the, the Bishop of Mana has made a very urgent appeal to the LTT as well as the government of Sri Lanka and the security forces to keep Madhu as a zone of peace. Uh, now it doesn't seem as if that's going to be adhered to. LTT has said that they will respect it, but it doesn't seem to be the case. And in the case of the government of Sri Lanka, the appeal has been very specific to declare it through a special gazette notification by the president as a zone of peace, and that has not happened. What seems to be the inclination of the government and the president is that Madhu should be liberated by the security forces, uh, by armed power, and not uh, declare it as a zone of peace. And uh, for me, even I'm a Catholic, I have been to Madhu several times on pilgrimage uh, with my family, and I would think that uh, it's very difficult for me to imagine that Our Lady of Madhu would want any kind of a liberation brought about by arms and security provided through arms, whether it's the LTT or whether it's by the Sri Lankan security forces. And it's, uh, it's, a, it's a tragedy because Our Lady of Madhu and the Madhu Shrine has provided security protection for thousands of people. And now she herself is a refugee.